Hello, welcome to my funny little corner. Today I'll be going over most of the steps that I went through in my first commission job. Unfortunately, I didn't record absolutely every step this time due to getting distracted, but this will get the point across. First, what I like to do with my models lately is dry brush everything with lighter and lighter grays from a black primer. You could just use white primer, but I just prefer this. Next will be a base coat of Demonet Hide for the purple areas, which were chosen in a kind of smart random way, I guess you could describe it. The opposite areas, on the other hand, will be base coated with Everland Sunset. This will be orange later on. After that, we'll go in with black and do a few areas such as the gloves, leather, backplate, weapons, and pants, as well as some other small things here and there. Well, the bony areas, we'll start them off with more fang brown. This will consist of the teeth and weapon shafts. Also, ignore the green skin. This was a miscommunication and will actually be blue. Now we're going to use some Zerius purple and what I like to do for beaten up armor panels is actually sponge on around two to three colors. This creates a physical texture as well as painting the color. Next, we'll use Screamer Pink. This just adds more variation and tonal difference on the surface. Just, you know, add some interest. With that done, we'll bring Demon at Hide back in to even everything out. Shit, I'm late. Oh god, I'm late. Oh god, oh god, oh... <laughs> hey, I'm here. Alright, let's get to it. As you can see, we accidentally did the orange off camera, but this is basically just a 50-50 mix of Fire Dragon Bright and Squig Orange. Now we'll go in with Averland Sunset and glaze in the highlights. You generally want to be subtle with this, as the tone difference between the orange and the yellow is quite harsh, so I'd recommend being slow with it. Moving on, we'll start the blue skin off with Incubi Darkness. I generally like starting with darker colors and working up to light tones. Coming back to the orange, we're going to glaze in some brighter highlights with Uriel Yellow. Next, we'll take a 50-50 mix of Squig Orange and Mornfang Brown, and this, of course, will be the shade. Make sure to apply this nice and thin to avoid a super dramatic difference in the tones. Anyway, let's paint a tongue! Base coating with corn red, of course. Back to the skin, we'll take a roughly 40-60 mix of Wah Flesh and Araman Blue to start bringing up the mid-tone.
With that done, some Jack and Half Nightshade is used to thin down as an overall wash, just to add some depth. After the wash is dried, we'll come back with our mid-tone and touch up the higher areas, leaving the darker blue in the recesses. Now we're ready to do some proper highlighting. By adding gradually more amounts of Orthuan Grey to our Wa Flesh and Araman Blue mix, we'll focus more and more on the areas that make the most sense for shiny skin. Next, for the eye, the customer wanted a bright glowing green OSL effect coming from it. And seeing as I somewhat recently got this Vallejo Fluo Green, I get to play with something I'm less familiar with. Going back to the tongue, I'll just add some Ulth 1 Grey to the corn red. Moving on to the teeth, I'll just use some more guest bone for the mid-tone, and then some Screaming Skull for the highlights. For a brighter highlight, I'll use some Ulth 1 Grey in the Screaming Skull. This will of course be used more on the edges. Then we'll give the whole mouth a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. With that done, we'll move on to the weapon handles with some Morvetrang Brown and Morgast Bone. With this, we're going to create a wood texture 
even though there is none. You know, it's just a smooth surface. This isn't something I've ever actually done, but I think the final result speaks for itself. I then add some Screaming Skull into the mix for the base highlights. After that, we do an all over wash of Agrax Earthshade. When that's dried, we'll come back with pure Morgast Bone and work up some highlights. Making sure to angle and shape the highlights so that they mimic wood grain. You know, otherwise it would look like wood. <laughs> And lastly, some smaller highlights with Screaming Skull. Moving on to the black areas, we'll start with a 50-50 mix of black and storm vermin fur. These highlights will be different um, depending on the material with the leathery bits receiving smoother, shinier highlights while the cloth gets scratchy, stippled highlights. This is useful to differentiate the materials even though they're the same color, but it helps. Next, we'll take pure storm vermin fur. Focus on making smaller and smaller highlights as we go along. With a 50-50 mix of Storm Vermin and Ulthuan Grey, we'll use this mainly on the leather to sell that shiny look a bit more, leaving the other black areas more matted and subtle. Once all of that is done, come in with some non-oil and wash all of the black areas. This just smoothens out and equalizes everything for a smoother, more cohesive result. Now for something more interesting, we're gonna do some rusty stuff for the weapons. Starting with a mix of Mornfang Brown and Corn Red, we're going to sponge that on fairly heavily. Then we'll do Mornfang Brown with a bit more randomness and less coverage than the base layer.
After that, add some squig orange to it and sponge it on a bit more randomly and covering slightly less areas. It really depends on what you're looking for. Finally, go over the edges with black, making sure to vary the length and depth of this process. You want to be as random as possible with this whole thing. Now, with this next step, it's purely optional, entirely an aesthetic choice, but taking Aramon Blue and Moot Green in a Roughly 2 to 1 mix, we'll go over the black areas and some of the recesses to add a bit of a verdigris effect. You can instead add silver if you just, you know, want the normal rust look. After that, we'll add Ulth 1 grey to the mix and go over covering less spots than previously. This will add you know, more variety and interest to it as well as a few highlights. Finally, moving on to the silvers, we'll simply take black metal. This will go over a few small details and, of course, the chainmail. Next, we'll take Reichland Flesh Shade and splotch on a few patches here and there, essentially acting like rust streaks. And of course, an all over wash of non oil. Coming back to the highlight, the armor, we'll start with the purple, with a 50-50 mix of demonet hide and serious purple. I like to splotch this on, considering, you know, beaten up metal, it's an orc, that kind of stuff. For the orange, we'll just use Averland Sunset. Moving on to the base, the client wanted an orangey, Martian-y tone. So we'll keep it simple with a base coat of squig orange and a dry brush of fire dragon bright. This base has some roots, so we'll just paint those the same as the weapon handles. And finally, we finish everything off with a lovely 
crisp black base rim. Mm. Delicious. And that's that. My very first commission piece complete. Oh, this was definitely a fun process, and I'm glad I got most of it on screen. You know, unfortunately, I didn't get the orange done, but well, that's sorted. Just a huge, huge thanks to everyone watching, everyone that subscribed, and big thanks to the client as well as Little Mishy Mash for you know adding his voice to this. Uh, I'd never thought I'd see the day when I'd get someone else on the channel, well, aside from, you know, Cal Kill, but that was mainly for the podcasts. But either way, I am as grateful as can be. Especially, especially to everyone watching. It's just, it's just huge. But, yeah, I'll just let you have a look at these final spin... Well, not really spins, you know, photos. I don't exactly have a little fancy little spinny turntable thing, my doodle. I'll have one in one day, but for the time being, you'll just have to settle on, you know, some photies, some little photies. Some well-taken photies, but just photies. So I'll just let that play for a bit. And one last thank you to everyone involved. And I'll see you next time, whenever that'll be. Oh, that's perfect. And thank you very much for having me. Mishmash, kitbash, and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya.